In this video, we'll talk about the different teratogens that you need to know for USMLE and COMLEX. As you'll see in just a second here, I'm going to fly through this video. We'll talk about different types of medications, the teratogenic effect that they have, and a really simple mnemonic to help embed this and ingrain this in your brain. This will be really short, and by the end of this, you'll be a master and get all these free points. Let's start with ACE inhibitors. The, inf the effect of ACE inhibitors is that it can cause renal damage and dysplasia. And so what I want you to think about is going to Ace Hardware to fix a damaged kidney. Ace Hardware is just a hardware store. So I always think about going to the hardware store to fix the damaged kidney. That is Ace inhibitors. Alkylating agents, their teratogenic effect is that it causes a congenital absence of digits and it also can cause a cleft palate. So instead of alkyl aiding, I think of alkyl, alkyl agents alkylating agents kill the digits. So the kill sound in alkyl aiding, killing the digits. And that reminds me that alkylating agents can cause the absence of digits. Aminoglycosides cause ototoxicity. This generally tends to be a fact that most medical students are very comfortable with. If you've seen my other videos, you've probably seen me use this mnemonic before, but Amine O glycosides, O for ototoxicity. Amine O glycosides, ototoxicity. Very, very simple. Carbamazepine causes two things. One, neural tube defects, which is somewhat unfortunately common in the anti-epileptic agents, and cleft lip and palate. And for carbamazepine, I think about eating carbs, and you can't eat carbs with a cleft lip or palate. That helps me remember one of the things that carbamazepine causes. Diethyl stilbestrol, also known as DES. So just brief aside here, a little history. This was a medication that was prescribed, I believe in the 40s up until the early 70s. We used to think that it would prevent miscarriage or preterm labor. And then what we started to see was that it was associated with vaginal, vaginal clear cell adenocarcinoma. And that is the teratogenic toxic effect of this medication. And so my mnemonic here is that the vaginal clear cells die, die for diethyl stilbestrol. Folate antagonists, and we're talking specifically here about things like methotrexate and trimethoprim, these cause neural tube defects. And you could say to yourself that the neural tube is folate to develop for folate antagonists. Isotretinoin, so this is an acne medication. It causes craniofacial defects, cardiovascular defects, and cognitive impairment. You don't really need to know the specifics here beyond what I've put on the slide, but those three C's, I can CCC your acne. CCC, each C stands for something, craniofacial, cardiovascular, and cognition. That's isotretinoin. So on your exam, and this is a little bit more applicable for step two, level two, if they give you a patient with really bad cystic acne that's refractory to maybe first or second line treatment, sometimes they ask the question, what do you need to do before prescribing isotretinoin or before prescribing the next best treatment? Sometimes they won't name it specifically, but they're suggesting they want to put the patient on isotretinoin, and the answer would be uh, serial pregnancy tests. Lithium causes Epstein anomaly. Now this is apical displacement of the tricuspid valve. And so what, what we see here pathophysiologically is that the, tri, the tricuspid valve moves into the right ventricle. And so what you see is tricuspid regurgitation and what is known as right ventricular atrialization. And so on your exam, you're gonna have a newborn who's gonna present with signs of cyanosis and maybe even some evidence of heart failure. And then sometimes they'll ask the question, you know, what, what agent was the patient's mother taking during uh, pregnancy or during the first term? And the answer would be lithium. Other times the test writer might even throw you a bone and, and suggest that there's a history of mental illness or something like that in the family and that it's kind of pointing or hinting at lithium. And so the mnemonic here is try some lithium if your bipolar ebbs and flows try for tricuspid valve because you want to remember which valve is affected here. Lithium tells you the drug and then if your bipolar ebbs and flows, ebbs for Epstein anomaly. All right, so we're cruising. As you can see, this isn't too complicated. I hope you're learning these. Methimazole causes aplasia cutis congenita, which is a 
fancy way of saying congenital absence of either the dermis, epidermis, or subcutaneous tissue. And the way that I memorize this is azole makes the skin go AWOL. So it rhymes, and of course AWOL uh, means that the, sk the skin is missing. So azole makes the skin go AWOL. That reminds you that methym azole makes the skin go AWOL. Phenytoin, so another anti-epileptic here, causes fetal hydantoin syndrome. And so this is um, a syndrome marked by a few things. Hypoplastic nails, seizures, intellectual disability, um, a, a characteristically small skull, and cardiovascular defects. The way that I memorize this is I think of the toin in phenytoin, and toin for like toes on your feet. The toins have small nails. Hypoplastic nails is usually what's going to clue you into this one. So they'll either show you a picture or they'll describe several findings, and one of them will be the hypoplastic nails. So the toins have small nails, hypoplastic nails. Tetracycline, so a group of antibiotics, can cause discolored teeth and abnormal bone growth. So basically they're affecting the bone here. The teeth is a big one, so they're going to show you pictures, and the teeth will, will certainly be abnormally colored. Usually there's sort of a gold or yellow hue to them. Occasionally they can be on the, on the bluer side, but, but usually you're going to see pictures of blue, uh, uh, yellow excuse me, teeth. And so instead of tetracycline, think teeth recyclines. Valproate causes neural tube defects. So again, this is what the third or fourth anti-epileptic we've seen with a teratogenic effect. And the way that I memorize this is that the neural tube is valprolate to develop, just almost identical to the other mnemonic of folate to develop. So folate antagonists and valproate all have that eight sound at the end, and that reminds you that the neural tube is late to develop. Lastly, we'll conclude with warfarin. Warfarin can cause fetal hemorrhage, abortion, bony deformities, and ophthalmologic abnormalities. And you want to think about going to war against the eyes, the blood, and the bones. So these are all of the different teratogenic medications you need to know. But as you can see, if you memorize my quick hitting one sentence mnemonics, these are pretty easy to keep in the back of your head and get free points on test day. Good luck.